so the the forecast is bullish, but we're going to fill the gap quite a bit. Um, bullish show red for the morning, I think, though. And we're going to be opening in like five seconds. Happy New Year, everybody who is watching out there now on the live stream. Here we go. All right, we're watching Jasper. Jasper is pulling back just a tiny bit. Watch your green over red entry there on Jasper. Don't let it get away from you. Here it goes. There goes Jasper, 165 already. And halting, I think, because it's just sitting there at 165, possibly halting at 165. Anybody get Jasper in the last couple minutes? I believe it's halted now. It wouldn't let you in. Well, that sucks. Why do you never get an invite for your streams? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think you have to click some kind of like notify me thing. All right, so that's where that goes. And um, GRRR actually coming up and over VWAP at possibly a good point. You never know where this stock might end up today, uh, but it does look not very liquid, so beware. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe it goes to 14. Who knows? <clears throat> so I hope you guys had a good uh, New Year. Good New Year to y'all. I definitely had a great, great New Year's uh, party I went to. And there was eggnog. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not, I don't know what that means. Oh, it, oh yeah. Oh, there was eggnog. <laughs> no, there was champagne. There was free champagne. It was pretty cool. Free unlimited champagne. Now that's a party. All right, so Jasper's halted. Did anybody get any Jasper? Anybody get any Jasper? JSPR? Hog it just for themselves. Nothing to remind you that you're not in your 20s anymore than a New Year's Eve party. Yeah, really, right? I mean, I, I've had certain years. I'm 47. I've had certain years where I just watched all the different time zones on TV and just was at home with family for sure. If I can get to something interesting, I'm down. I'm down. I'm not grumpy. <laughs> All right, I'm curious to see where Jasper goes. Once it opens, we also have G5, <clears throat> CERN, S-R-N-E, Sorrento. I uh, definitely wanted to get that up. I think I might get that up instead of Ur or Pally here. S-R-N-E. What do you do with Kala? Let's take a look at the daily chart on that. I mean, it looks like so far it's predicting to be a strong sell-off day. So uh, you might want to get out of that. Before you lose more money. But if you are not in it and you're interested in Cala, well... You know, you might want to be watching the one-minute chart to try to get some kind of base or bottom if it forms today, but probably not. It's probably going to, now that it's going red, it's going into a sell-off cycle. And you'll um, be able to wait. It might be a multi-day cycle. Mullen, trying to get over 32 cents, says RJ. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Okay, oust is up 10 cents in two minutes. Yeah, I don't know. 
I'll pull it up. All right, Sorrento doesn't necessarily look good. So good, we've eliminated one. Okay, yeah, but Oust, it doesn't have any volume. So we're not interested in that. You'll, you'll learn that over time, that you don't want to be interested in stocks like that with low volume. Because you'll get, you'll get majorly fucked once. And then you'll go, oh. <laughs> so anyway, have fun in the meantime if you don't want to take my advice. But just stay away from low volumes. Low volume stocks, doesn't matter how much they're up. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Not worth it. All right, Jasper ought to be coming out of the halt soon here. Uh, yeah, um, it was at a dollar sixty-five. Seems to have a lot of bullishness. Look at these pullbacks. These pullbacks are not only sideways; there's almost a vertical pullback. So this is very bullish. I wouldn't be surprised if it gapped open to like a dollar eighty. We'll see in a second here. Um, and if it comes back down. You probably should buy into it pretty quickly uh, because its um, pullbacks are so bullish, showing extreme bullishness. You got up and then pull back straight, up and then pull back basically up in in curve. And this could be the last one. You know, like comes out of the hall, dollar seventy five, something like that. You know, it starts to pull back red, boom, you get in. It starts to rush up to maybe $2, a $1.95. Uh, and then it, it probably will form a base for an hour. But I could be wrong. It could be even more bullish than that, you know. I'm definitely wrong all the time, but in a good way. <laughs> Things turn out to be better than I was hoping usually. But it's better to err on the side of caution. All right, we should be coming on the halt on that pretty soon. Molin, yeah, is about to break pre-market high of 33 cents. That would be a, a momentum moment. So you want to get in kind of now before it actually flips over that number because once it flips over the number, it's going to pop. It's going to pop the level two. So this is a good spot to risk. And it doesn't mean you're going to make money. And you could lose money, so be careful. Uh, but, you know, you got to know what you're doing. Get out if it doesn't work right away. And you can always get back in. And if you can't always get back in because you're under the PDT rule, then you shouldn't be trading day trading anyway. You really need to get out of PDT. Um, until you've got $25,000 sitting in there and you're, you're out of the PDT rule, uh, you should probably be just trading um, with uh, no PDT restrictions, the market, using um, futures, trading futures on the market, just playing the market. Much better way to start out building your roll that way unless you do possibly super stocks or overnight uh, penny stocks about it um yeah but if you you know got that day trader bug and you got to do the day trading uh you shouldn't do it uh, with under twenty five thousand dollars um uh, but you can still do it uh, unlimited PDT with as little as $50 in a futures account at, for example, trade All right, let's take a look at the market. All right. There's a gap here on the daily, at least, uh, on the market hours, at least. Um, let me take a look at the futures version. Well, it looks like we did go red this morning <clears throat> already. Already did the red. Well, I believe the market um, will eventually need to uh, fill that. Really, again. <clears throat> All 
No, it's pretty well covered. So we're probably just going to keep staying green today, it looks like, from now at this point. Now, that could change uh, once we get just a little bit higher because then we'll be sweeping um, a swing high. And when you sweep a swing high, a prior swing high, uh, there's the possibility that the um, market makers, the algorithms, will uh, then – uh, take that uh, short sale, take that liquidity, and then uh, bring the market down to sell it back at uh, a significant low, say the low of the day today. So it's possible <clears throat> somewhere in midday uh, will be very red. And then maybe by the end of the day, we come back up for a little bit of a doji. Jasper opened over two. So we're talking phenomenally bullish. and. Um, Anybody that uh, didn't get in just now, um, you are not a day trader. <laughs> Randy's like, fuck you. I didn't get in. I tried to get in. <laughs> that, that, that looks pretty good. Trying, I did. So, uh, but seriously, yeah, if anybody got into uh, <laughs> Jasper, JSPR, uh, you know, good on you, uh, especially if uh, you got in in the few minutes that we were talking about it on that pullback around 145. It is now halted at 204. Yeah, Mullen dropped, you know, its shape is not very beautiful and it didn't break over 33 cents. And, you, you know, you want to exit that quickly if it didn't break. The market's going uh, green, having a nice strong green moment right now. 11 minutes into the market. Gur just totally faded out. So forget Gur. Now another one I can pull up here is LHDX G5. That's often <clears throat> doing stuff. GFAI. Let's see. Uh, not liquid enough. And then the other one, LH, what? LH DX with that. Clearly the opportunity of the morning, Jasper Therapeutics. And that was the number two uh, biggest gainer this morning, but the other one, HZN, was uh, um, was related to raising raising money, I think. What did HCN do? I'm curious. NVOS is definitely CERN by LHTX CERN RDHL. Do we care? No, it's market cap, pre market. EVAX again, the colonoscopy company. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pull that up. Let's take a look at EVAX. Let's get a good probe on EVAX and see what's up on that. Uh, I'd like to see the level two on EVAX. No, I, I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm assuming it's quite deep. <laughs> assuming the level two is pretty, the depth of market on, on EVAX is. Swivel's moving. All right, let's pull that up. I was supposed to have that up, as a matter of fact. Yeah, swivel looking good, guys. Uh, decent volume, decent liquidity. Not a lot, but it's up over VWAP now, so it's somewhat safer. You, know, you might get your first pullback to 22 cents somewhere around. There it is. There's 22.5. You might get a pullback to 22 cents and maybe even have to retest below VWAP. <clears throat> you could build a position there for safety. Swivel, S-W-V-L. Avatar was the highest grossing film of 2022. Really? So it, it pulled it in the final days, Justin, because uh, uh, something else was at 1.5 billion, I think. I forget what it was, Spider-Man or something. So it, it, it beat 1.5 billion? That's fantastic. And I saw it twice. I wanted to see it three times. Didn't get it out to the third time, but I'm going to go see it a third time this week. I, mainly just to support it. I'm a huge James Cameron fan. 
I'm a huge Avatar fan. I'm not like an Avatarite or anything, but I'm just a big James Cameron fan. And yeah, hopefully everybody saw it. Everybody see it. It was really good. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It was good. It was great. Oh, I think it was Maverick. Wasn't Maverick 1.5 billion? I think so it beat Maverick? Really? That's insane. And IMAX gapped up? Wow. Uh, Watch that swivel. I'm going to take a look at IMAX for a second. I'll pull it up over here. Jasper will be coming out of the halt soon. Ah, it looks like the um, <clears throat> algorithms grabbed a little liquidity uh, and are now rushing to the lows. Taking a second for, I don't know why uh, for today, uh, my trading view is uh, pulling up tickers really slowly, really slowly. You know, the VIX pushing 23, so not exactly the safest market right now. Like you're going to get those whiplashes, you're going to get those um see when it gets that high it's almost like a measure of how much turbulence is in the water if you will how much turbulence and so if you were to sort of try to trade waves it's much harder if there's a lot of turbulence because you're trying to it's just you see what i mean so when the vix gets over 20 turbulence has hit like white water levels and when it's over 30 it's white water rapids raging you know CMMB is trying. Yes, everybody. Take a look at CMMB. Yeah, IMAX did gap up to 15 from about 1440. Not enough to really trade. Uh, but that that's great. Was on a lot of IMAX screens. <clears throat> I'm sure IMAX is dying. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Oh, I just got one of those things where your ear... Uh, goes quiet or whatever, and then it's ringing. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> what is that all about? Yeah, so, you know, IMAX has been uh, bearish along with the entire market for for a year. No great spot to be getting in it. Wow. Everything blanked out. Those bond rates are sitting at 3.855%, <clears throat> by the way, right now. So it's slowly getting away from you, but not too far away from you. And then like uh, Chris said, I mean, there there's a newly issued Ford bond you can get. I think it's a 100-year bond, or it's a really long one, 60 years, 50 years, something like that, at 7%. What are you trading the markets for if you can put your money into Ford bond at 7% for the next 50 years. And when rates go down, the face value will likely double. So your money doubles. I mean, like, man, why be, why have your money fucking around in the stock market? Why be an Apple when you can get 7% guaranteed? Well, from Ford, I mean, as far as I'm aware, that's a pretty good rated you know, company that's not going anywhere for a few years. That's all we need is a few years. But, you know, it's probably going to last forever. The market uh, coming down, let me pull that up in the bottom here. Market coming down swiftly. Bond, yeah, bond, B-O-N-D, yeah, is news to you. Yeah, uh, I think that's great investment. I, I've got five of them, so that's like $5,000 worth. Um, and then I've got uh, dozens 
of other bonds right now, all long duration. You want long duration because this is historic. Once in a lifetime is what we were talking about this morning. You won't see in a at a useful point in your lifetime. You know, it'll happen again, but it'll be you'll be an old guy <laughs> at the point. The useful point in, in your lifetime is right now. Uh, bonds, long duration bonds around 4% is insanity. It's a, it's incredible. You become the bank when uh, rates go down, when, if you've got bonds at 4%. <laughs> your dog, your son's puppy ate your glasses. Damn. Oh, the poor thing. So, like, now you got to go get new glasses. I got to get some new glasses, too. I've hit the bifocal point in life. And um, I probably can reverse that if I did like daily eye exercises, because honestly, you know, I can see close up. It's just like, it's just an eye strain thing. You just don't feel like doing it. You get lazy. That's what it's all about. JSPR is open, everybody. It opened at 240 and it pulled back and it's halting down now. So that's it. The fun's over. That's pretty much what I was predicting, that once it hits two, it's going to go for the first pullback. And um, I think it's going to have to base out from here. But look, it's 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 opening and halting, opening and halting. It hasn't calmed down yet. So anything can happen. Anything can happen still. Um, it's just it's no longer at a, a good risk entry point uh, to risk a lot uh, or even a medium amount. Now, if you wanted to mess around with it, you'd be needing to risk a little. <laughs> Buy bio. Take a look at a stock called bio. If you if you have a ticker, you want me to take a look. Make sure you capitalize each letter so I kind of understand that it's a ticker. Just give that a try and see what you're talking about. Bio is about to break the morning high of 1050. Not bio. B, yeah. Bio, B I O. All right, we'll pull that up instead of IMAX. RDHL is running, says reanimated mind. RDHL. Let's take a look at that, though, for instead of RDHL. Okay, bio is too low liquidity. We're not going to touch that. If it's Bio Rad Laboratories, Inc. Uh, too low of liquidity. Four hundred twenty dollars stock as well. Yeah, RDHL definitely broke over. Um, Eighteen is at nineteen. It doesn't have a huge percentage going on. Uh, the market dropping, as you can see here, it is dropping more. <clears throat> so it's probably seeking those lows from uh, Friday or this morning. There's that uh, red move I was expecting. Now, the market is in a bullish formation, okay? But the day may be red. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier. It's in a bullish formation, but it is likely to be just a red day. And then maybe by the end of the day, afternoon, it goes and it retraces and puts in a doji entered finish. All right, guys, I'm going to break now. Uh, let's move back into the group. The week is heating up. I like it. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. Cheers, everybody. Uh, and um, let's go back into the uh, momentum room and the market trading uh, channels and uh, hang out in there and be on top of our opportunities in there. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. All right. Catch you in the group. Catch you in the cord. And the market is dropping. The market is dropping. There's more to go, too. I think.